what the hardest question well obviously is the obvious one are you going to die um which you, well yeah i am <laughs> i'm going to die um and in the end i went to the doctor and i just remember the look on her face after she did the examination and she just looked at me and i said yeah it's definitely cancer I think, to be honest with you, it's kind of made me really find who I am. This definitely has changed my life in a good way. <laughs> Cancer has changed my life in a good way, not just a negative way. I'm Leanne. I'm 37. Um, I live in the UK. I've got four children, um, 12, 10, uh, 8 now, and 5. Um, and at the moment, I'm a stay-at-home mum going through chemo. So, as you can see. And, yeah, hobbies. I just like walking health, fitness, that sort of thing, healthy eating. I'm a vegan as well. Yeah, so the symptoms, because basically I had a smear test when I was, I think I was 22, which in the UK is actually under the age you're meant to have it. And it happened by fluke that they did the, the smear test for me. And then when I'd had it done, they said, we shouldn't have had it done, you're not 25. Um, everything was clear on that, that was fine. And then I didn't have one. After that, I had my youngest, but I didn't have my, my other children. I had three more children. We got to 20, no, 2019, um, and I started having um, irregular periods, bleeding after sex, and the pain, and just not really feeling myself. Tiredness as well. I had severe tiredness. I get to the end of the day, I mean, I had four children, but I'd fall asleep in the bath and real fatigue, really bad. Before that, there was no problem at all. And I still felt generally quite healthy, but it was the fatigue that really made me worried. Um, and in the end, I went to the doctor. And she was a young doctor. She was a, a very young junior doctor. And I just remember the look on her face after she did the examination. And she just looked at me and said, I think you need to see someone else. And at that point, I knew. <laughs> I just knew that what it was. Um, so I went in and had a proper examination. And then I had a biopsy done. And they said, yeah, it's definitely cancer. We're going to go ahead. We did. They did um, radiotherapy and um, chemotherapy and brachiotherapy, which was all successful. That was brilliant. It was cervical cancer. That was fine and that was brilliant and then we waited a year we had a few scans everything was still fine and on the year scan they found a little tiny dot in my lung barely visible and they said they'd wait a few months and see what happened and they waited five months and by that point it had grown by two centimeters and then in the time it took to have another scan two months later it spread to a node in my windpipe <laughs> and so i was diagnosed stage four uncurable incurable that was hard. That was really hard. It wasn't something that I expected, to be honest, because obviously being positive, I like to hear positive things. So, but again, that it doesn't necessarily, when he said it and my consultant, he said, you know, it's not curable and it's treatable, but not curable. But in that same breath, he also said that he's going to try this bout of chemo. And if this doesn't work, that is it. There is nothing else he can do. So that, that was, that sort of took my breath away a bit, which was really hard, but I just have to look forward and think well you know I take each stage like a little step so and um, at the moment I'm having chemotherapy for that so I'm just chemotherapy at the moment I've had three rounds and on Monday I've got my scan to see if it's working so I had my started my chemo in October and it was the day before my birthday and I felt fine on my birthday which was brilliant and then it's meant to be every three weeks so three weeks later I had a blood test for pre-chemo and my neutrophils were low so they postponed it a week um, and then the, I had it that the, the week later and then they postponed it again for the next one by five weeks and in that time I ended up in hospital with neutropenic sepsis um, and I had my third one last Monday which means my scan can now go ahead. But with the chemo I had years ago I didn't have any of this this is quite intense what I'm having right now in comparison so when it first happened I really struggled and I, I cried and I was really it, and that was even worse for me looking at myself realizing that I was that broken by it so I was scared the next time. But when it came the next time, I just thought to myself, you got through it last time and it's going to be, you know, it might not be as intense. It might be longer, but you, whatever happens, it will end and it will go and it will stop and then you'll feel better again. And it did. And then the last time it happened and I got through it. So, so far for me, um, there's and something that wasn't really described to me, which I've talked to other people about and they said that they have felt it too, is what I've called chemo doom. And it does make it sound worse than it is, but it's just this feeling of, feeling like you've been poisoned, which I suppose is what, what has happened in a way, but it's kind of this feeling that 
of impending doom and I sort of especially when you're not feeling well and you're sort of laying in bed on your own that's what I struggle with is this sort of this feeling of emptiness and loneliness and I'm quite a positive happy person and I find that really hard but thankfully it doesn't last that long it only lasts a couple of days <laughs> but you can sort of get through that and move on but yeah that that feeling of yeah sort of doom and like yeah it's not that's not nice yeah I'm just keep thinking I've only got three more cycles as long as my results come back and it's actually reducing it I've got three more cycles left and we're good <laughs> we're done I've got my scan next Monday then I see my consultant I think it's going to be a full body PET CT to see if it's spread anywhere else as well and he gives me the results and from there whatever he says we go down that path and then after that we we decide what we're going to do and you know if it means that there is no more treatment then I have to try and think of what I'm going to do with that time however long that is and make the most of it I like to sort of take things for what they are when they sort of come to me I just sort of take them process them and then yeah I was quite calm about it it was it was more telling other people that's what really worried me telling my mum and my dad I thought about how I'd feel if that was my daughter and friends and people that had you know lost people it's difficult it brings up memories for them and it's just a very difficult process and for me I, I find that other people's feelings and emotions are harder for me to cope with than my own if that makes sense you know I'm worried about other people's how they're coping with things so yeah that was really difficult that has been really really tough and I mean I've got four children like I said and they're all different ages and they're all very different people very different very individual um, and they've all struggled in their own ways you know one of my sons, he, the one that just turned eight, he has really been struggling at school. He's been showing a lot of aggression and, you know, the school have been amazing. They've been so supportive. Um, and my eldest daughter, she's been very quiet, which has been very worrying and very, you know, she hasn't really said much about it. But I try and be honest and open as much as I can, try and explain things as thoroughly as I can and answer their questions patiently. You know, some days it's really hard and I, you know, I don't really want to talk about it, but you have to help them because they don't understand. It's really difficult for kids to see things like how adults do and it's our job as parents even when we're going through tough times to be there for them the hardest question well obviously is the obvious one are you going to die um which you, well yeah i am <laughs> i'm going to die but i don't like i said to my son the other day I, I could walk out down the road and get hit by a bus and it that you know it doesn't necessarily mean it's imminent you know it's, it's a hard thing to, to grasp and it was a difficult thing for me to get my head around um other questions you know like they, they all want to know how I feel during chemo and all the sort of things that everyone else asks me really it's, it's you know what's going to happen to them when I'm gone and who's going to you know there's questions that they've asked that have been really really tough and questions that I've actually sometimes it's okay to just say do you know I don't know the answer I can't answer you but I'm here for you <laughs> I can hug you but I can't give you that answer right now so yeah there's been there's been some tough ones there's been tears <laughs> job as parents even when we're going through tough times to be there for them so I might get a bit emotional you've got to you know that is what we need to do for them so just be patient with them like you are with yourself and just work with them sit with them chat with them there's books out there to help and reach out to other people there's people that will help you if you don't feel you can do it just for yourself your schools or you know go out and find people to help you because there, there's people out there that could do it and one thing I found really helpful is social media which I wasn't big on social media before but that has been my saving grace I've met so many amazing people and people you know I'm getting messages from people all over the world just sending me messages and saying how are you today how are you getting on you had chemo the other day are you okay and you know how are you feeling and you know people genuinely really wanting to know how I am and I try and do that for other people too and there's such a beautiful community of people that just really care about each other and they really want us all to be okay and they want us all to know we're not alone and I think that is yeah you, you can't beat that that has been amazing so go, get you know go out there and find people find your tribe get with them and yeah that is that is what everyone should do <laughs> and there's so many people going through these things I mean in the past couple of weeks I've had a few friends come to me saying they're having biopsies on their breasts and they've had lumps here or things or worries and it just seems to be such a big thing now I mean even not with me having cancer just so many people and it's just so hard to watch so much suffering with this horrible thing that's happening and it's it's really tough you know because everyone deals with it so differently you know and just because I'm a positive I'm positive about it it doesn't make it it's just such a, a really hard thing it's really hard so don't give up don't let things get you down have you can have days where you don't feel right and you feel sad and there's nothing wrong with that you know you don't have to be overly positive just to make yourself positive for other people if that's not your thing and you're not feeling that way let it out just be however you feel let those feelings happen but don't give up hope and also go and find your tribe like I said go out and find people there's social media there's people there's groups support groups physical support groups there are people out there who can help you that genuinely want to 
make everyone feel that you know they've got someone you can talk to someone that they can do all sorts for you if you've got struggles with money you've got struggles with childcare, you've got struggles with you know sorting wigs or anything you want help with help with they're there to help you so go and find them and and it will change your whole perspective on what's happening just to look after yourself just to take care of yourself and let yourself be taken care of as well that's something i've always struggled with is people taking care of me I like to take care of other people but sometimes you just got to sit back and just let people take care of you and look after you and love you and you know that is a, a very nourishing thing to do so just take, take take time for yourself let other people take time for you and um, just take each day as it comes but also live in the moment go do if you think oh, I should have phoned that friend I haven't spoken to for ages phone them if you think oh, I should have I wish I'd gone on that weekend away. Go on that weekend away. Try and make things happen for you. Do little things all the time to improve your situation and improve your mental health. I think, to be honest with you, it's kind of made me really find who I am because I'm so much more, I was always very confident, but I'm much more confident in my, my person and my personality. And it's just, it's really affirmed what I believe and how I feel, my moral compass. And yeah, it's definitely, it's changed my life in a good way. <laughs> Cancer changed my life in a good way, not just a negative way. Thank you.